ओके सर गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरीबडी इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट वेरियस फॉर्म ऑफ ए कॉड्रेचर फेस शिफ्ट की क्यू पी एस के सो क्यू पी एस के इज सिंपली नॉन एस ए कॉड्रेचर फेस शिफ्ट की एंड इट इज बिलोंग्स टू द फैमिली ऑफ फेस शिफ्ट की वी हैव इवन डिस्कस अबाउट द बाइनरी फेस शिफ्ट की वेर एम इज इक्वल टू टू देन वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द एम क्यू पी एस के कोटेचर फेस शिफ्ट की विथ एम इज इक्वल टू फोर द मेन एप्लीकेशन ऑफ क्यू पी एस के वॉज इन डब्ल्यू सी डी एम ए इन डब्ल्यू सी डी एम ए द मेन मॉड्यूलेशन स्कीम वॉज क्यू पी एस के इन दर्ड जनरेशन इवन टूडे इन सेटेलाइट कॉम्युनिकेशन एंड वेरी एडवांस वायरलेस टेक्नोलॉजी क्यू पी एस के इज स्टिल is still a very uh, potential uh, candidate uh, mod uh, modulation scheme uh, so what we have cover uh, last time is about the uh, qps ke signal mathematical representation qps ke signal waveform we even discuss about the const uh, offset qps ke constellation diagram of qps ke and the circuit of modulator and demodulator of qps ke so this part we already uh, learn in last lecture now in today's lecture we we learn about the two very important modulation scheme one is the quadrature amplitude modulation simply known as a qam and the another one is known as a continuous phase shift key continuous phase shift key that is simple known as a continuous uh, cpm so we'll try to look Uh, over this all modulation scheme today, and we will conclude this lecture uh, with a concluding remark about the comparison of all the modulation scheme like ASK, FSK, and B, uh, uh, PSK uh, with uh, its B terror rate performance. So here we are going to start with the quadrature amplitude modulation. Now, uh, in a QPSK where m is equal to four, so we are uh, getting a four phase. Forty five degree, one thirty five degree, two twenty five degree, and three one five degree, and each phase represents the one symbol. So we kept the amplitude constant there. Only the symbol to symbol variation is uh, based on the phase only. So phase would be changed from symbol to uh, symbol. So S one, S two, S three, and S four, all four symbol have a same magnitude or amplitude, but they can be represent with a different phase. So this part we have learned, but Uh, this scheme has some uh, uh, demerits uh, or disadvantage. The one disadvantage is if you go beyond m is equal to four, then the problem is uh, like as if you go with eight psk, uh, then if uh, in qpsk we have m is equal to four, but if you take m is equal to eight, then it is known as eight psk. So in eight psk we have a uh three bit combination so there are eight combinations are there in a total s1 s1 symbol is the first symbol represent the bit combination 0 0 then 0 0 is a s2 symbol and then so for all and then s8 symbol the last symbol is rep represent the bit combination 1 1 1 so here we have a one symbol represent three bit and there are eight combination so m is equal to 8 there are eight combinations and based on this eight combination the signal is known as a 8 psk signal but here the problem with the scheme is that the difference between two neighboring uh, phase the phase difference if you observe here uh, if any two uh, you can consider if i consider this one So what is the delta phi? Delta phi is the phase difference between two symbol. So if you find delta phi here, so that is simple forty five degree. In earlier case of QPSK, yeah, this is for eight PSK. And if you consider the earlier case of QPSK, so in QPSK delta phi was pi by two or ninety degree. so if you go beyond the qpsk so the phase difference between two neighboring symbol is going to decrease if now if you choose the 16 psk then delta phi is going further down as a 22.5 degree 
and so so if the size of constellation points has been increased in the particular modulation scheme of a psk then here the the difference between two neighboring phase is also going to decrease and then it leads to the phase error so the all the psk scheme above the qpsk is highly sensitive to the phase variation right so that is the same thing pi by 4 phase is observed neighboring constellation point and if you go further and further with 16 psk 30 to 64 psk so phase difference is reduced and that becomes a more sensitive to the phase error so looking to that the psk scheme beyond qpsk like 8 psk 16 psk are not use a communication or they are not as much popular as the qpsk scheme is there but if you are not using the scheme like as a 8 psk 16 psk and so forth then the problem comes is how we can increase the beta rate further or beyond the qpsk so QPSK set a limit of two bits in a one symbol, but if we want to increase the spectral efficiency or if we want to increase the peak rate, then we need to transmit more number of bits in a symbol. So two is not sufficient in some cases. So then the new scheme has been proposed. And in the new scheme, we are not only changing the phase, but we are changing the amplitude and phase both as per the symbol and this is known as a quadrature amplitude modulation and this is proposed to take the advantage of higher bit rate with the constellation size so now what is the difference in qm so Q, qm is basically the mixing structure of ask plus psk so what is ASK that we have learned so far is ASK is a scheme in which the information is stored in form of amplitude variation where PSK is a scheme where information is stored in form of a phase. So if we combine both together, so we have a symbol, the, we have a set of symbol with same magnitude but different phase then we have another set of symbol which have different magnitude than the earlier set but the symbol which belongs to the set number two they all have a same amplitude but they are deeper in terms of a phase then we have a set three so what we can see here we can make the multiple copy like this we can have a set one you can see there are four symbol s1 s2 s3 and s4 in set two you can have this another symbol like as s5 s6 s7 and s8 now what is the difference we hear so that difference is this all can be represented with the set of amplitude a but the phase would be a phi 1 then s2 can also be represented with the amplitude that simply i will say a1 because to represent the difference between the set as a set one so a1 is the same amplitude with s2 s2 symbol but the deep phase is phi 2 then you have s3 with a1 and phi 3 and you have s4 also with a1 but the phase is phi 4 this one you have, you can note down so this is the very important part that we can learn now what with this uh, what with the another symbol s5 s6 s7 and a8 so s5 is a different amplitude than the first set so that can be represented with the phase a and phi i and that is represented with the different uh, amplitude a2 and phase phi 2 uh, phi i sorry 
So that is again the face are repeated over here S6, S7 and S8. These are the four symbol and that you can represent with A2 amplitude but the face here is repeated. Phi1 is repeated. So Phi1 is the face of symbol S5 and the same is of a symbol S1 but they are different in terms of amplitude. That is the same amplitude but the face is different. That is same amplitude but the face is different Phi3 and that is the same amplitude phase. So this phase 4 is like a QPSK because in QPSK we have 4 phase but the one quantity we have added here is the amplitude. So symbol to symbol there would be two variations are observed. One is in terms of amplitude and another is in terms of a phase. Set 1 all the symbol have a same amplitude but the different phase. The same phase are repeated for the set number 2 but all the symbols are represented with a different amplitude of A2. So that is the variation. So now, if you represent the quadrature amplitude modulation, this Q is for quadrature, A for amplitude and M for modulation. So that, this we can say, the symbol can be represented in mathematical form as AI cos omega ct plus phi i, right? So AI is vary from I would be a 1 to N, and accordingly the phase is also vary. So amplitude and phase both will be vary as for the uh, for symbol to symbol. And so here information is not only stored in terms of amplitude like as ASK but with the phase also. So this is a combination of ASK and PSK both. So this is simple the name is given as a quadrature amplitude modulation. Now we will go for we can start with for 16 uh, QAM. Uh, we can even you can you can even learn about the 8 QM also but here this is an example in which everything would be clear so in 16 QM so M is equal to 16 here here M is equal uh, if you take this if you consider 16 QM so here M is equal to uh, that we write here so that will be more clear so M would be equal to 16 n is equal to 2 raised to n so if you find the value of n so n is equal to 4 so every symbol is a bit combination 4 4 bit combination so let's say this one could be given as a name of s1 this could be given a name of s2 then would be s3 then would be s4 now if you give the name of this as s5 this would be S6, that would be S7, that would be S8. Then further you give the name of uh, this one, S9, S10, uh, S11 and S12. And then we take this boundary S13, then S13, S14, and then here S15 and then S16 okay so there are 16 symbols are there and they have a unique bit combination is to be assigned for every symbol now if you start with this one this is the one this magnitude is 3 this magnitude is minus 1 and this magnitude is roughly considered as a minus 3 this Q is an imaginary axis, so we can say this one is a J, this would be of a 3J, this would be of a minus J, and this would be of a minus 3J. Now, if you have to represent every bit, right? So there are four sets are there, you can assume or there are four set. This one, all the bits like this S1, S2, S3, and S4, they are at the same distance from the origin so th this all are part of this circle right now if you choose the different color the another symbol like is s5 s6 right so they are also part of a one circle like this one right and if i'm not good in drawing but it's you can consider like this way there would be another circle so this is of radius r1 this R1 was the magnitude 
and if you consider this one from here so this radius is simple known as a r2 radius now there are another bits like is uh, this one and this one and so forth so if i draw another circle from here so they are represented by some radius like as r3 they all are at the same distance of r3 and if you plot one more to cover this one if you if you try to cover this one then you get you will get there there will be some more that can be covered over here so that can be represented with some radius as r4 okay so we have a four set and the what are the uh, magnitudes are there uh, if you if i consider the uh, uh, sorry phase so, so that is the 45 degree this one is uh, how much 135 degree this one is the 215 degree and this is the 315 degree how you represent this right so this s1 symbol can be represent as here these are the coordinates so that is the j and that is one so s1 symbol uh, so i think you understand this uh, so now i remove this portion uh, so you may better understand okay so this is one part So this is minus three okay so now we start with s1 symbol so s1 symbol is basically a combination of one and j so s1 symbol can be represented as a one plus j now if you see about s2 symbol so s2 symbol is basically represent as here minus one this would be the of minus one and here it would be j so s2 symbol can be represented as minus one plus j then we have a s3 symbol so s3 symbol is minus one and that would be of minus j so s3 symbol can be represented as minus one minus j. and if we say s4 symbol here so it is one and j so that would be represented as one plus j now if you find the magnitude of this and the phase so how we can find this so for if anything is like as x plus j y so its magnitude r is a square root of x square plus y square and if you find the theta of anything so it is tan inverse y by x so one uh, if you uh, if you find for first one so that is a square root of one plus one square root two right and here tan inverse one by one so that is of 45 degree so it can be represented as square root 2 and angle is 45 degree now for s2 symbol is a minus 1 square is 1 plus j is multiplied with 1 1 square so square root 2 so that can also be represented with but that is minus so that can be represented with 135 degree the magnitude of the next one here if you find the magnitude of next one so square root 2 and that is of 215 degree and if you find the magnitude of this one so uh, sorry 225 and this is of 315 degree so what you can observe here is all this symbol s1 s2 s3 and s4 have the same magnitude this shows the magnitude they have the same magnitude and this shows the base 
but they have a different phase. The first symbol is a 45 degree, the second is a 135 degree, and then 215 and then 315 degree. Right. Now, if, if we go further and uh, if we choose the another symbol from any circle like uh, the outer circle, the outer circle, so we can concentrate on S5. So S5 symbol can be represent as uh, this is the 3 and this would be of uh, 3J. So represent 3 plus 3J. Then S6 symbol can be represent as a my here S6 symbol. So it is minus 3 plus 3J. S7 symbol is basically here. So if we elaborate here, it is minus 3 and on imaginary axis, if we expand it, so it is the approximately of 3J, but it's a minus. So that is minus 3J minus 3. And if you consider S8, like this one so it is the 3 and here it is minus 3j so it is 3 and minus 3j and if we again find the magnitude here so magnitude and uh, uh, we can here simply write m for magnitude and base so what are the magnitude of this four symbol so that is the square root of uh, uh, 3 square so 9 plus 9 square root 8 so that is of 3 into square root 2 so that have is 3 into square root 2 what is the magnitude of this same 3 into square root 2 3 into square root 2 3 into square root 2 and if you uh, if you find the phase so that is the similar of this 3 by 3 again gives a 1 and then it's a 45 degree so that would be a 45 degree 135 degree 215 uh, sorry 225 degree and this one is of 315 so what you can observe in this this is a set number one and this is a set number two so you can observe here the amplitudes are same in a particular set here it's a three into square root two in set one all have the same amplitude of square root two square root two so they belongs to the same circle and at the same distance from origin because this magnitude defines the distance the line of sight distance between the symbol and origin and if you see the phase so in particular set the magnitude is same but the phase are different if we go to the set one to set two so the same phase are repeated but with a different magnitude and in particular set all have the same magnitude but the phase are different so this different phase is like as a quadrature phase shift key and here the magnitude does vary from set to set and phase does vary from uh, uh, symbol to symbol in particular set. So same you can he here uh, if you go for a S9 then S, S9 here can be represented as a 3 plus J. S10 can be represented as a minus 3 plus J. S 11 can be represented here with uh, with this uh, uh, like as a j and what is the minus 3 plus j and so forth so in the similar fashion you can identify every face and the symbol so this is the one part you need to learn and if you go beyond to that then we have we may have a 64 qm so in 64 qm m is equal to 64 is equal to 2 raised to n so n requires 6 bit needed to, to represent a one symbol but the total number of symbol and the total symbol is equal to the n which is simply 64 so they have a 6 bit combination these are the 6 bit combination and we can say this all have the same magnitude but the different phase then if you move further then you can pick up this one and here this one there is a second circle they have the same magnitude but the different phase then you can have a third circle and so for all so you are getting here the multiple points and multiple sets from set to set the amplitude does vary and from symbol to symbol of particular set 
the phase does vary so we have a, both the combinations of amplitude variation and phase variation both are incorporated in the quadrature amplitude modulation so this is one part you learn and then we have a this is the 256 qm up to 256 qm you find this is a constellation diagram for all the points which start from 4 qm 16 qm 32 qm 64 qm 128 km and finally 256 km. So now in today in 5G is a MIMO communication. We are using this very uh, high uh, modulation scheme. It's known as a 256 QAM. So where m is equal to 256 so is equal to 2 raised to n so n is equal to 8 bits are needed to represent one symbol it represent one symbol so this part you need to learn and uh, one more thing you can observe uh, in from qpsk to 16 km the number of points are increased so their boundaries are uh, compressed uh, so the boundaries the two points are come closer and closer and then because of that for a small noise is sufficient to cross the boundary and whenever we are taking a decision at the receiver side to separate them out by using a thresholding mechanisms then uh, uh, then there would be more probability of error so beat error rate it basically goes to increase from QPSK to QAM8, then QAM16, then QAM32, and then if you go further, then QAM256. So that is the ray, how the beat error rate is going up. Beat error rate going up. This is a disadvantage, but the advantage is the beat rate. If you consider this is the beat rate, so beat rate is going also up. So it support the high data rate transmission or the transmission which requires a high data rate like as a multimedia transmission and so forth. So this part we you need to understand. Okay, now we reach to the last topic of your syllabus and that is the minimum shift key and Gaussian minimum shift key. So what we have noted earlier if we are using the frequency shifting key or the phase shifting key so the main problem is the phase variation so if you observe here whenever the symbol is change this is a symbol s1 and this is a symbol s2 so in phase shifting key the phase would be vary here is a 45 degree to 135 degree and that is sudden change of a phase or abrupt phase change the signal is a spread in a frequency domain. And if, if such signal spread in a frequency domain, then it can combine with the neighboring signal in a frequency domain. So if this is a frequency spectrum of your signal, so because of such kind of a jump discontinuity or abrupt change of a phase, the signal spreaded in a frequency domain and we have get the ICI that is known as a inter-symbol interference. So that is, uh, sorry, inter-carrier interference. This is not a good factor because because of this uh, uh, because of this intercarrier interference the signal is not able to recover in its original form if you apply the low pass filter or band pass filter so how to relieve this problem this is the major concern and to relieve this problem whatever the modulation scheme has been proposed is known as a minimum shift key and then it is elaborated further with incorporating some modification and then we have a final version of gmsk is known as a gaussian minimum shift key and gmsk uh, gmsk is the key technology of gsm in gsm uh, which has been proposed as a third generation system 
where the GM, GMSK is a key modulation scheme. So in earlier we have learned QPSK which, which was used with a uh, WCDMA but with the GSMA the appropriate modulation scheme was a GMSK. So that we learn first MSK and then GMSK. So the main concern over here is to reduce uh, this ISI. Right? This is the main objective, how to reduce the ISI. So there is a need to modify our scheme of a PSK in such a way that we can get the minimum value of intercarrier interfacing. So the, uh, the scheme has been proposed is the CPSK is a continuous phase shift key. This continuous phase shift key, the special case of CPSK is the MSK is known as a minimum shift key and the special case of MSK is a GMSK is known as a Gaussian minimum shift key. So the one solution, so we start with the MSK and then we learn about the GMSK. So the main concern over here, if this two carrier, this is a one symbol, let's say G1 of T and G2 of T, uh, you can even consider this one has a, a S1 of T and this or S0 of T, anything like this. This is S1 of T and this would be suppose S0 of T. So, if they are orthogonal, if this this is orthogonal, the condition for orthogonality is that it's say uh, for one time period zero to t, this one should be uh, the multiplication or dot product of your two signal s one of t and s zero of t conjugate should be a zero. And if this condition does satisfy, so this set is known as a orthogonal. So for orthogonal set, set, if they combine somewhere, so they will produce a zero outcome, right? So this part becomes a null if the signals are orthogonal. And then we have not this spectrum, but we have a spectrum like this. This is the null. So here we are getting something like this or this both are producing a null outcome here. So we are really with this problem and we have the signal outcome right this portion and this portion right this portion becomes a null so there is very basic requirement and this is the very fundamental concept from where the today OFDMA orthogonal frequency division multiplexing which we are using today in a 4G has been emerged so this concept has been emerged from this way if we want to reduce a ISI, so we need to reduce a ISI, we need, we need a set of orthogonal signal. And because of orthogonality, the portion which has been overlap in a frequency domain can produce a null outcome. This is the main requirement. So looking to this, uh, we would, I would like to refer this document. Uh, I quickly go through this document uh, because of a time constraint, but uh, this documents I will provide you in our class notes. So uh, for a, you can take a look of this. So let's assume for a minimum frequency spacing uh, in, uh, in MSK, what would be the minimum frequency spacing here? So that we are getting the two uh, signals are orthogonal to each other and if the signals are orthogonal to each other so at the overlapping we are getting the null outcome and the effect of intercarrier interference can be highly reduced this is the goal so first we need to find if we are choosing the two carrier here f1 and f2 so what is the minimum frequency spacing between f1 and f2 so let's assume here uh, if you are choosing two carrier so if you are choosing the carrier is F1, so here F, F1 uh, should be somewhere here, somewhere here and uh, there would be a F2, right? This would be F1 and this would be suppose F2. So let's say assume here, there would be a, some frequencies uh, known as a carrier frequency and this distance is known as a delta F distance this distance is also known as a delta f distance so if you maintain the delta f distance 
between f omega f uh, between uh, uh, fc and f1 and fc and f2 so we can say f1 is simply fc minus delta f and f2 is simply fc plus delta f with the goal these two frequency components are orthogonal but we don't know what would be the delta f if we know the delta f we can calculate the f1 because fc is known so what is the delta f that we need to find so that and delta f should be choose such a way so that this f1 and f2 would remain orthogonal so that is the portion that we need to learn and if we know the delta f so by using this calculation we can find the f1 and by using this calculation we can find the f2 right because fc is known but delta f is not randomly choose it should be choose in such a way so that the component of cos f1 t and cos f2 t that we can say the symbol s1 of t and that we can symbol s2 of t should be orthogonal so this part we need to learn right okay so we can go with this so let's choose the two signal s1 of t and s0 of t and this is the condition for orthogonality so to be orthogonal it go, uh, uh, to maintain the orthogonality between the two signals the dot product should be zero within a time period of a uh, this is a time period of one cycle this should be a zero this is a condition for orthogonality sig uh, of the signal then let's assume s1 of t is a this is our s1 of t and this is our s0 of t so this signals is of a two different frequency uh, sorry i i may I, I would to like f0 here so these are the signal of f1 of t 2 pi f1 of t and this is a signal of 2 pi f0 t right so the dot product should be a zero if you can simplify this so there were two cost c into c to cosine term right now assume f1 of f2 uh, f1 of f0 so if you say f1 plus f0 here that would be of 2 fc as per this equation delta f delta f would be cancelled and here if you put here the 2 fc t so this is the integration for a one cycle uh, for cosine so cosine have the same area of positive and negative cycle so this would be turned to zero there is no need to write this there would be a zero so we have only one term remains is cos 2 pi f1 minus f0 t if you integrate this so we have a sine term and if you convert this so we have this equation sine 2 pi f1 minus f0 we have only this equation remains because this one the first term becomes a zero this becomes a zero now if we elaborate this portion so that we go got uh, this one multiply here so we have a sine 2 pi f1 minus f0 tb and when the sign becomes a zero so every n pi or k pi it becomes a zero so that should be this theta theta should be a k pi to be this equation should be zero so it's a 2 pi f1 minus f0 tb and if we represent this equation in terms of f1 minus f0 what is f1 minus f0 here f1 minus f0 will give us of a delta f2 delta f right so delta f is basically f1 minus f0 by 2 so uh, this gives a k pi 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 would be cancelled and then finally we turn out with this equation f1 minus f0 is equal to k by 2 tb and if you put the minimum value of k is equal to 1 so first point where this equation would be 0 is equal to 1 by 2 tb and delta f is what f1 minus f0 by 2 so 2 tb tb is equal to the time period to, for a 1 bit is equal to the data rate rb so if you put this value here it becomes rb by 2 and if you put delta f is equal to f1 minus f2 the same has been put here if then we are getting the delta f value is simple rb by 4 so you note down this now we have already calculated the delta f and for if we maintain this delta f 
then we can have f1 is equal to fc minus rb by 4 so uh, sorry plus yeah minus and that we have f2 is equal to fc plus rb by 4 if you if you maintain this delta f as a rb by 4 here then definitely the two equations that we are getting here is cos 2 pi f1 t and cos 2 pi uh, 0 sorry f0 of t that would be a uh, you can consider as a 0 that definitely this part would be orthogonal so the condition here we have found is if you kept the delta f is equal to rb by 4 then the two cosine terms we are getting is a cos 2 pi f1 t and cos 2 pi f0 t are definitely orthogonal so if you put in this equation what what were the equations we have got earlier is the y uh, frequency shift key is uh, that is the amplitude into cos omega i t right so omega i is basically what we can see here and it's a cos 2 pi f1 of t and that is represented as a, a cos the second symbol this is for symbol s1 and for symbol s2 the equation can be represented as a cos 2 pi f0 t but we already found f1 and f0 here we place here so this equation is a cos 2 pi fc plus minus rb by 4 and uh, uh, plus is for f1 and minus is for f0 and like that uh, sorry uh, yeah so you can put up over here uh, this is the equation now if you elaborate this equation and assume the whatever the data you have available we have only two value minus one and one so this equation is of s of t is basically the equation of your frequency shifting signal which we have already earlier mentioned and learned a lot about this so now uh, if plus or minus can be represented by a n this a n belongs to either minus one or plus one so let's assume if a1 is equal to minus 1 and a2 is equal to plus 1 like this so this plus and minus sign over here is uh, represent with a n so that becomes a 2 pi n rb by 4 this is simple mathematical calculations that you can understand it and if you find the response at the after one cycle so this is t is represent with t minus and tb because n value would be changed so we have a different time period we have a different symbol now what basically interesting is if you want to reduce this jump discontinuity over here so we need to add some linear phase so phase should be linearly vary between one phase to uh, another phase so the important part here is phi 1 and phi 2 so if you try if you if you transact from phi 1 to phi 2 so it should be linearly vary. It should be vary. We cannot avoid this, but it should be linearly vary. If it is linearly vary, we don't have, we have no jump discontinuity. This is the important part. So what is the important part that we are learning over here is if we don't have a jump discontinuity when the phase is linearly vary from phi 1 to phi 2. So if you consider this is a point where the jump discontinuity found this is the point or this is the boundary. This is the boundary where the symbol is going to change and where the phase is also change with the symbol. So at this boundary, we can consider whatever the phase here, it says suppose phi 1 before the boundary, the same phase should be continuity after boundary. So that is the important here. Phi 1 is the phase before, before boundary. And phi 2 is the phase after boundary. And to reduce the phase discontinuity or jump discontinuity that this phi 1 should be equal to phi 2. 
so that part is has been placed over here the face is 2 pi a n as this is a face we have taken this because 2 pi f c t is common so this is the face we will consider we have to we need to add the extra phase here because they are providing a dis, uh, jump discontinuity and we have to add the extra phase over here so that they are linearly vary and the phase before the boundary and phase after the boundary becomes a equal so this theta term is basically added over here and what would be the theta we can add in a way so that the jump discontinuity should be reduced is again in a question and that we need to find this answer so theta n is to be added over here to reduce the jump discontinuity and so now the equation looks as 2 pi n rb by 4 t minus n t b plus theta n at this point this point is considered as a theta 1 before the boundary i mean this one or sorry pi 1 and this space is considered as a phi 2 after boundary at the t is equal to n plus 1 t b right so only the difference here is the first phase is simply known as a t minus n t b this is running from here right and the another phase is t minus the next time period so n plus 1 t b which is considered over here and this both should be phase so if you simplify this equation we are getting theta n plus 1 is equal to theta n n plus 5 by 2 and if you n plus 1 is replaced with n so we are getting the final equation in general form is the theta n is equal to n minus 1 a n pi by 2 so this is a very important part and i think you take a look of this now if you solve in a more general mode so we have the same equation over here this is the same equation right and uh, if uh, this is a recursive process so first we find the theta 0 then theta 1 then theta 2 so if we assume the first phase theta 0 would be 0 then the theta 1 can be identified this if you put there we can find the theta 2 so theta 2 would be found here is theta 1 plus a 1 pi by 2 right and for theta 1 if you compile this 2 uh, with a 0 and so if you compile this so it gets the a 1 plus a 0 so pi by 2 is common if you go for further and further pi 3 then you are getting pi by 2 plus a 0 plus a 1 plus a 2 what are the a 0 a 1 and a 2 they just shows the symbol so earlier we have discussed a n would belongs to belongs to either minus 1 or 1 so this can have either plus minus 1 this can have also plus minus 1 this can also so a 0 may be minus 1 plus 1 or maybe a plus 1 minus 1 anything but it should have only two possibility either it would be a plus or minus accordingly we can find in more general form if you find for theta and then the theta n is basically a 0 plus a 1 up to a n so if you add the theta n here in such a way uh, to reduce the jump discontinuity so that uh, so that the phase before the boundary uh, looks identical to the phase after boundary then the value of theta n would be looks like this in more general form it's addition of all the previous amplitude of the symbol so what is here this is the phase is added in a fsk or psk signal to reduce jump discontinuity and why we are reducing jump discontinuity so that the signal should be a uh, uh, should have a little less uh, very very little ICI intercarrier interference right so this is theta and what is this AI over here what is this AI over here this one is AI and this AI is just represent the sign of a symbol or we can save a magnitude of symbol so that is simple represents a better that is the magnitude it belongs to it belongs to minus one or one right it just represent the magnitude of a symbol so if you if you have a memory in your system and if you store all the previous value and if uh, you add 
at the time of n if you add all the n minus 1 value of your previous symbol ai and then multiply with the pi by 2 to convert in a phase then you have a new phase theta n this new phase theta n would be added in your symbol so that whatever the signal are represented over here they have a very smaller amount of intercarrier interference and this is a special case of a continuously phase shifting key so it is known as a msk this is a case of msk minimum shifting key right so you can learn this uh, looking to the time constant we are not going in detail but this material will be provided so you can read and learn more now whatever the pulse wave earlier choose would be a rectangular phase a rect as a rectangular pulse and for this rectangular pulse we have a sync pulse in a frequency domain so in time domain it is rectangular but in frequency domain it is in a phase here we can see our main objective is the mix, mix, maximum power is to be in a main lobe so this is known as a main lobe and we have a minimum power in this side lobe so main lobe uh, uh, should be consist the maximum power and minimum lobe so should consist the minimum power but the problem with the sync function is if you go with a rectangular pulse we obviously have a sync pulse in a frequency domain the main problem with sync pulse is they the side lobes have not the minimum power it doesn't have a minimum power it constrain a more power so we need pulse shaping and for a pulse shaping we try to produce a pulse which in a frequency domain which have a minimum power inside lobe then rather than rectangular we choose the pulse shape as a Gaussian because if we have a maximum power in a main uh, um, in a side lobes then definitely whenever it is combined with some other pulse like this one then definitely they have again a intercarrier interference so only the option is available is that uh, the, that we change the shape of a pulse and if you do the pulse shape then we have a gaussian pulse and gaussian pulse have a minimum power in a side lobes and maximum power in a main lobe and then the msk is slightly modified as a gmsk is known as a gaussian minimum shift key and this gmsk is widely adopted uh, in a gsm system as a key modulation scheme with the the bandwidth it's the optimum value of a pt is a point five where the, it's a bandwidth and t for a time period we are getting the optimum value so now if you uh, move further so we have a different value of gmsk it's a 0.5 and 0.3 so uh, and this is a msk so msk if you see here this is your main lobe this is the main lobe maximum power should be constrained and this are the side lobes here also this all are the side lobes so you see which scheme is better so this scheme is better because it has the minimum power power inside lobes so this is generally prefer this one has slightly higher higher power inside lobes so it is little bit less prefer than this one and if you choose this one so very higher amount of power is actually waste in a side lobe because we generally put here the filter uh, uh yeah filter this is a filter response so the, whatever the power is in a main lobe they are important the other power which are in side lobes they are basically produce a ici and that and even if they are not useful because they're not passed through the filter so this one is the case where higher amount of power inside lobes they are generally not prefer this is not prefer this is prefer more then you can prefer this so if we see this one what is the uh, what is this scheme 
So this scheme, which has a maximum power inside lobe, this is the case of MSK. This is the case of GMSK with the product of a bandwidth and time is 0.5. And this is the case where it's again the GMSK with the bandwidth and time product is 0.3. So basically this one is preferred, but the problem with this scheme, the problem with this scheme has higher if you want to save something in a frequency domain effect in time domain also so in time domain the signals are overlap and that produce a is isi so we are going with a middle solution in this solution the isi inter symbol interference in time domain we are looking here in frequency domain but if you look in a time domain so if we take the advantage in a frequency domain with a very less ici then the isi will increase so basically isi and ici this is in time domain the signal overlapping in time domain is known as isi and signal overlapping in frequency domain is known as a ici if you want to reduce this one this one increase so the best ici can be obtained with this scheme with gmsk with bandwidth and time product 0.3 but it rise is this isi is minimum then obviously the isi would be maximum so is rise the isi the signal overlapping in a time domain so the middle solution we have to go with and the middle solution is gmsk bt with 0.5 where the side lobes are also in a control and isi is also control so this is a case where this is a case uh, sorry not this one but the this one this is a case where isi and ICI both are control. So this is a best scheme. We can go with this, and this is the major modulation scheme of GSM also. So I would like to stop. Uh, okay, so uh, before we stop here, we take a look of the comparison of various modulation scheme. So if you see the various modulation scheme, then uh, we have learned ASK, FSK and PSK in ASK the informations are stored in form of amplitude in FSK it is in store in form of frequency and PSK is stored in form of a phase if you talk about the bandwidth so in ASK is a minimum bandwidth of RB the same bandwidth is observed with the PSK but the scheme like uh, FSK it has very higher bandwidth it's maybe approximately double than ASK because the two carrier signals are used if you talk about the complexity, so complexity is lower in ASK, but if you move FSK and PSK, so FSK is a moderate bandwidth and PSK is very high bandwidth. If we talk about the power efficiency, so power efficiency is very poor in ASK because the information are stored in terms of a magnitude. So different symbol, we need to decide a different amplitude. So if M will be increased, so power efficiency will further goes down because for every symbol to separate the minimum distance of it, 2a we need we have to go with a different different amplitude so first symbol can be a and minus a then the next set we can have a 3a and uh, minus 3a the next set we have 5a and minus 5a and so forth so that's power efficiency is going down with m further in fsk it is moderate because here the uh, information are not stored in form of a amplitude and it is in form of a frequency and if the frequency does vary from symbol to symbol it will not affect the power because power is mainly depends on amplitude not on the frequency or phase in psk also the power efficiency hg is better now if you talk about the sensitivity of noise so most of the noise is affected in amplitude form so ask is very sensitive to the noise fsk is less sensitive and psk is even very less sensitive because here the informations are stored in form of a phase if you talk about the b terror rate performance so ask b terror performance is very poor fsk has a moderate b terror performance and psk has a good b terror performance so if you draw a diagram of a b terror rate on y axis with a different value of signal to noise ratio or energy per bit to noise ratio it be by n0 so if you see if EB by N0 goes higher, then B terror rate goes basically down. It means a higher signal to noise ratio means your signal is of a good quality or it has a, a more magnitude than the noise. It superimposes the amplitude over the noise. So higher EB by N0 means higher quality of signal to noise ratio. It simply means the B rate goes down. But in that case, if you see, this is the ASK 
this is fsk and this is the psk so if you take any one value of minus one here so uh, let's say uh, if you take the value of a 5 db so if at the 5 db value of ev by n0 if we find the b terror rate so b terror rate would be found here oh sorry uh, it can be yeah it, it can be constructed like this way uh, this is no this is the ASK and this one is the FSK the PSK so what we can observe here for PSK at, at, at this point here we are getting this bit error rate right oh, sorry. that was right sorry it's my mistake it's say ASK that is PSK right so for P uh, sorry make a mistake here it's a PSK and it is ASK so what we can observe here it for a ASK we have a some uh, some error it's a approximately 10 is to minus 1 for the same value of EV by n0 if you plot here so we are getting the beta error rate is approximately 10 is to minus 2 so which is smaller which one is larger 10 is to minus 2 is smaller than 10 is to minus 1 and then here the same value of EV by n0 if you plot here so we are getting beta error rate is 10 is to minus 3 it is even smaller than this and this all obtained at EV by n0 is equal to 5 db this one so what we observe this is basically observed in case of a ASK this is observed in case of a FSK and this is observed in case of PSK so that means the PSK has minimum B terror rate compared to FSK and FSK is a minimum B terror rate compared to so ASK has a higher bit rate for any particular uh, EV by N0 same you can apply for any other uh, EV by N0 you are getting the same result so for higher bit error, uh, bit error rate is observed and for PSK we have a lowest bit error rate is observed right, so that's one yeah you can consider this is the higher bit error rate and this one is the lowest bit error rate now if you move further uh, for a different version of a uh, with m value how uh, if m change the bit rate performance is basically decrease so if you start with the uh, very binary ask if you get, uh, take the three different variations of ask with uh, two re ask four re ask and eight re ask and here again for a minus one you can observe the higher bit error rate if for here what you observe is your p terror rate sorry here it may have a again the different value uh, that you can consider as a BASK and that is ADTSK sorry 8 so what you observe here for ASK you have a higher B error rate if you go further for ASK you have a lower B error rate if you go BASK you have even lower B error rate so the b error rate increase with the value of m if the m increase then b error rate is increase right and what is the reason the reason is for qps uh, for one scheme we have a four constellation another uh, another higher value of m we have more constellation points are there so this region decision region becomes uh, becomes a smaller so EB by N0 is highly dependent on this and then bit rate it goes increase definitely higher value of N will increase the bit rate the number of bits transmitted in a one symbol or the same duration but at the same time the bit error rate is also going up so the bandwidth efficiency but the bandwidth efficiency are increased because with the same bandwidth of MRE signal we can transmit more number of bits this is not the case of ASK but rather than ASK if you take the case of FSK, PSK and anything so we can generally write for any signal ASK, FSK or PSK we can generally write the bit rate increase with the value of M so this part you need to learn okay so this is the what uh, 
about the syllabus of digital communication and digital communication syllabus in my person uh, i am going to conclude the syllabus with this lecture okay again i repeat the things what we've learned so far so in the syllabus uh, we have learned about the sampling so sampling basically there are the analog signal like this and we need to convert the analog signal into the digital signal here so there is a basically two step process the first part is a sampling in a sampling we need to consider the Nyquist criteria then there is a quantization to rounding of the value here we have a different version like as a PCM DPCM then we have even learned about the another two schemes like as a delta modulation and adaptive delta modulation then we apply the source encoding here we have learned about the Huffman code how to reduce the number of bits before transmission so Huffman coding we will learn here then we apply the scrambling scrambling is used to randomize the data to provide a more better security and to uh, limit the number of zero in your string then we have a channel encoder so this portion we have not covered it, it falls uh, in a part of Sony sir so in channel encoder that we can have a linear block code then there is a cyclic code and there is a convolution course these are very important about the channel encoder this will uh, increase the reliability of the system then we put the interleaving the number of bits are added in it uh, to support the higher bit rate then we have a digital modulator here we have learned about the various modulation scheme like uh, ASK, FSK, PSK and in PSK even we have learned about the QPSK then we have learned about the quadrature amplitude modulation and then we have learned about the MSK and GMSK so this part we have learned and then there is a power amplifier and the signal is transmitted so this diagram is basically a transmitter of communication system digital communication system so everything is summarized over here now if we go between transmitter and receiver there is a channel channel will add a uh, channel will add the noise in the signal so to remove the noise we are going with a decision detector in between there are many repeaters are there repeater 1 2 3 between transmitter and receiver these repeaters are equipped with equalizer it will it's a transmitter of equalizer it's a receiver of equalizer it transmit equalizer it's a receiver of equalizer so one side it uh, sorry it receives the signal here and it transmit the signal at different end so this is receiver this is transmitter so it receives the signal from one side and transmit it to other side and then this is the receiver so in the receiver the first part is low noise amplifier then rf amplifier this is like a super heterodyne receiver we have a mixer rf amplifier then we require carrier synchronization so this part is carrier synchronization part then goes to the digital demodulator so it reverses the process what we have done here as a digital um, modulator so we learn about the two kind of a uh, demodulator coherence and non-coherence that is for ASK, FSK, PSK and all. Then there is a D interlever uh, lever it, uh, to remove the bits which we have earlier added in interlever. Then there is a channel decoder. So it's a decoder so basically which kind of schemes you use if you use a linear block. So it's a linear block decoder. If it is a cyclic code you use in transmitter so it's a cyclic decoder. Or if you have used the convolution so that would be a convolution decoder. Then we have a descrambling process then we have a source decoder it's whatever the main code compression we apply we take it reverse then we have match filter so match filter is like as a decision uh, uh, it is used as a basically to take the decision here whether the bit receive bit in presence of a noise it is a zero or one so that's the threshold uh, thresholding is basically used here and comparator is used for here then we have a decontizer so it's a reverse process of quantizer and after this this one we are using a low pass filter so it is the reconstruction of your signal which is sample version so here you are getting the signal again in form of a sample signal and here you are getting the signal in form of a continuous signal and here you are getting the signal in form of a binary like one zero one one zero one so that is a totally reverse process what we apply here there is a analog signal here we are getting a discrete signal this is a discrete time signal and here we have got after passing through quantizer we have got the signal in form of a binary so this is all portion about the digital modulation scheme hope you have enjoyed this subject and uh, prepare well for all the subjects digital communication has a very rich contents 
even whatever they describe in your syllabus they are not sufficient if you go for a further study and if you are interested for a research later on you can find the various aspects of digital communications very fundamental concept and even in 4g and 5g also where uh, there are some fundamental concepts are used in a modified way so hope you understand this one and this subjects uh, will provide a good insight okay so that is uh, 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 good for everything and thank you for listening this uh, lecture